Greetings, Star Relations. I am delighted that you have joined us today. Usually this is a class and a workshop, but just for you, this presentation has been created. This is an introduction to dowsing. We will explore the different methods of getting answers through spirit for yourself and your world. We will explore the history of dowsing as well as why it is called dowsing. And in the name, we will discover how dowsing works. In the presentation, you will learn about some of the things that can be done with dowsing, as well as tools and methods to work with. Dowsing, however, still is a fledgling science and is limited only by your willingness to let spirit and dowsing inspire you. Everyone can do dowsing, so please don't let that stop you from giving it a try. Well, let's get started. The ancient art of dowsing has been practiced throughout millennia, although the names used to identify it may have changed in different cultures and eras, the techniques have not changed a lot. In 1949, a party of French explorers while searching in the Atlas Mountains of North Africa stumbled across a massive system of caves known as the Tassili Caves. And on the walls were covered with marvelous prehistoric paintings. Among these fascinating wall murals, was a gallery devoted exclusively to the depictions of spacecrafts and ETs. They also found a remarkable huge wall painting of a dowser holding a forked branch in his hand, searching for water, surrounded by a group of admiring tribesmen. These wall murals were carbon dated and found to be at least 8,000 years old. In Egypt and the Middle East are etchings on 4,000-year-old temple walls of pharaohs holding devices in their hands resembling dowsing tools. The Cairo Museum has ceramic pendulums which have been removed from 1,000-year-old tombs. In China, there is an etching of Chinese Emperor Yu who ruled China 2,500 years ago. And in his hands, he holds a rather bulky turn-prong device that resembles a dowsing device. <clears throat> the historical records of Greece refer to dowsing, and the art was widely practiced on the island of Crete as early as 400 BC. Researchers have uncovered evidence that the Pathian Oracle of Delphi used a pendulum to answer the questions proposed by her clients, kings, queens, nobility, and military commanders who traveled great distances to confer with her. Many passages in the Bible allude to dowsing, relating in considerable detail how both Moses and his brother Aaron used a dowsing device referred to as the rod to locate and bring forth water. Moses, having struck a rock in anger with this rod, was kept from the promised land. In the Old Testament, the prophet Ezekiel reports that King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, uncertain as to which city he should attack, Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, or Rebath of the Ammonites, directed his dowsers and diviners to select the best target, and they chose Jerusalem leading to its seizure and the long Babylonian captivity of the Jews. The Jews learned the ancient art from their captors, and in the Old Testament, prophet Hosea wrote, they now consult their pieces of wood, then the wand makes pronouncements from them. For example, in Ezra 3.63 of the Old Testament, it is written, the governor told the people not to partake of the most holy food until the priests contacted the Urim and Thummim. In Samuel 28 to 6, it says, When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer either in dreams by the prophets or by Urim and Thummim. The Urim and Thummim was a breastplate device with gemstones used to divine answers and information. During the period of the 1400s, dowsing devices were used extensively 
by miners seeking mineral oil who referred to the fork stick as a deuter, an umbrella word in German meaning to show, to indicate, to point out, to auger, to strike. The word dows seems to have made its first official appearance in 1650 in an essay written by the famous English philosopher John Locke, whose noble writings inspired the framers of our own Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Locke wrote that by use of dowsing rod, one could devise or discover water and precious minerals, such as gold and silver and mineral ore. Locke has appropriated this phrase from the long-dead English West Country language of Cornwall, where in Cornish dowsy meant goddess, and rod meant tree branch, and from which he coined the phrase dowsing rod. How very interesting that dowsy called forth the goddess Terra, the earth, with the tree branch, as that is who is being consulted in matters of what is within her. In the 1700s and 1800s in England, Germany, and France, various books on mining and engineering referred extensively to dowsing as the ancient art, as widely used by miners for hundreds of years to locate water and ore deposits which featured dowsers holding forked sticks. Collectively, in some of the world's finest libraries, such as the Library of Congress, the Widener Library of Hartford, and the Sterling Library of Yale, you can find approximately 3,500 specialized books in the ancient art, and the list grows steadily. So, what is dowsing? For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, let me say that you won't find anything of value in current dictionaries or encyclopedias. Those comments, prepared by orthodox scholars, are incomplete and inaccurate, giving only a few descriptions, generally summarizing all with the cryptic comment that dowsing is simply folklore. They are unfamiliar with the living earth and ether that allows communication with an all-knowing source. So just how do you get answers when you douse, no matter what method you use? Well, Mother Earth is a living being. And so when you do things connected with the Earth, such as finding water, gold, minerals, directions, ley lines, it is she that you talk to, and it is she that is answering you back. When it is questions of a personal nature, such as dowsing with a pendulum, using a pendulum board or chart, and you are asking about personal questions such as health or uh, knowing things that you need to do, what is good for you and what isn't, then it is your high self, it is spirit or your angels and guides to whom you are talking to and they reply to you through the use of the instruments that you are using. Dowsing is the exercise of a human faculty which allows one to obtain information in a manner beyond the scope and power of the standard human physical senses of sight, sound, touch, smell, hearing. Dowsing may be an ancient art and science, but even those that today that search for water use pretty much the same method, an old forked stick. Someone who has worked with this all their lives have gotten really good at talking to the earth and getting answers from her. A good dowser can tell you where the water is, how deep it is in the earth, how fast the water is flowing, how many gallons per minute, if it is sweet water, sulfur water, or geothermal water, if it is a dome of water where several aqueducts come together, which direction the water is flowing, the best place to drill a well, and of course, where the broken water pipe is. If your interest in dowsing is piqued, let me show you a very easy and inexpensive way to get involved. Right here are two 
regular coat hangers gotten from the martinizing or clothes store cut where the two X's are so that it creates an L-shaped rod then you're going to hold it like this young man it's very important to hold it very very loosely so that the rods are free to swing back and forth without any impediment or any restriction coat hangers are of tin but your L rods could be made of stainless steel brass even gold uh, baited brass or even copper any of these metals or alloys work wonderful for receiving answers with your dowsing. One of the uses for dowsing is measuring your auric field, for the spirit extends beyond your body. Now here Jonathan is going to measure Becky's. Watch as he walks forward, and as he enters into her field, her field pushes those rods apart. There you go. You can do this at home. It's a lot of fun, and kids have a ball with it. I'll take my atlas. Just a an atlas, whatever map, whatever page. Okay. And I take my pencil, this kind right here, with a mechanical pencil. It's got it erases really easy. My marks, my Dawson rod, my homemade Dawson rod. Um, take a map page. Okay. Um, show me, or is there any gold or silver buried large caches, like over a jar full of gold and or silver buried still on this map? <laughs> yes. Okay, I put my rod upside down. I'm going to scan it. Show me the largest uh, cache of gold and or silver on this map. And scan. Hat pulls back. Let's go right there. So I'm gonna mark my spot. Okay, I turn it a little bit. Show me the largest cache of gold and or silver buried on this map. Turn it a little bit. Show me the largest cache of gold and or silver buried on this map. Sometimes you'll have to scan up and down the whole page. It's not going to let me go past it because I'm used to doing it this way. Just got to keep turning back no matter what. I'm just got that spot. Okay, once I get my location. I'll go all the way around. I'll keep doing the map all the way around until I find my antiques. And I get a location. See that right there? And then I'll go back and say, don't let me pass it. Don't let me pass the location. Watch. See how it turns? Push into it. Don't let me pass it. And I'll watch where it turns right here. This is where it turns. I'm going to draw a little circle right there. Get the map and I get a zoomed in map of it where I can see the streets really well in the area and I'll go around it all the way around it again. Just keep going around and around now. Keep marking it until you get your spot. You end up with a spot like this. Let's see. that on there. Just like that. Hope it works for you. Another really fun use for your L rods is to douse ley lines. Here is the map of Onondaga Lake, which my friend David Yarrow meticulously mapped out the different ley lines. Here you can see that form is beginning to take shape. 
He ended up mapping the entire city of Syracuse and he found some very interesting things. But we will devote more information to this later. So there are a number of different dowsing tools. There are the V-rods, which act very much like a forked tree limb, bobbers that say yes and no, pendulums that can swing, say yes and no, and used with the chart can spell out words, tell you how many, and a number of other things. And then, of course, our L-rods. Pendulums can be used to divine answers, usually yes or no, on charts. Here are four examples. One is a very simple one, clear up to very, very complicated ones. It is suggested that to create your own chart that you start with a very simple one. Simply put yes or no and basic answers on it. Then as you go along and you get comfortable with it and you start asking more complicated questions, you can then add to your chart other aspects that will help you answer the questions in the direction of what your interests are. So that your chart becomes a growing chart you can use a necklace, which here are several different samples, one with a piece of gold on it, a couple of precious gems. This is like a regular pendulum. Now to get started, okay, we will ask this pendulum to give us a yes. Now give us a no. Pendulums are good for checking chakras. Well, that's interesting. Little baby's going backwards. Must be because I'm grounded into Mother Earth. Show me if this chakra's open. divided into four quadrants. I've already done that. Right there. Now I need to find out which quarter. Okay. <clears throat> Give me a yes. I am looking for a mountain to do ceremony on. It needs to be accessible. So, if the one I'm supposed to go do is here, okay, it's the one I'm supposed to do over here. This one, and divide it in four quadrants. Is 
the mountain in this quadrant. It's the mountain in this quadrant. It's the mountain in this quadrant. mountain I'm looking forward to do ceremony is it on in this quadrant. Okay, that's a no. The mountain I'm supposed to do ceremony on in this quadrant. Okay, okay so this is quite interesting. Okay, is the mountain I'm supposed to do in this quadrant? Is there a mountain I can do in this quadrant? Hmm, that's sort of a maybe of some kind. There we go. Nope. Okay. Now, we do another one. So, okay. It's the mountain to do ceremony on in this quadrant. Hmm. It's the mountain to do ceremony on in this quadrant. Okay. In the wrong quadrant. How about that? Okay. It's the mountain I'm to do ceremony on in this quadrant. Okay. It's the mountain I'm supposed to do ceremony on in this quadrant. see too much in, in mountains over here in the two that are left. Okay. Is there a mountain here to do ceremony in? Nope. Is there a mountain here to do ceremony in? Hmm. Okay. There's there a mountain here to do ceremony in. Is there a mountain here to do ceremony in?
Is there a mountain? Well, is there a mountain here? Did you send one? over here. At this point, I would get a map that enlarges this area more so I can see what's actually in there and do it again until I can find where it is that I'm supposed to do ceremony at. Another method is hand, hand dowsing, using your own energy to discover the energies that are around you. To do this, you start by opening up the chakras, pressing in the center of your hands to open up that chakra and get the energy flowing. Then rub your hands back and forth briskly until you begin to feel a vibration in them. Now, as they separate, the energy will form between them. And as you hold your hands, you can sit and breathe the energy into your hands. You can feel the pressure begin to mount between your hands sometimes even pushing your hands apart. Now you can use this energy to douse and feel others' energies. At the bottom is a picture of hand dowsing known as Reiki. Here the practitioner is going over the individual's body without touching. As they go over the body, they will realize that they are being a cold spot, a cool spot like a breeze blowing off the patient's body. This coolness denotes a leak, a place in the aura where the person's energies are leaking out. And it can be the cause of much um, tiredness and fatigue. And so the practitioner then knows to close that area and to seal that area so that the leaks stop. Another type of energy that they may feel is one of heat. Heat would denote um, inflammation, an infection of some kind, something where the body is trying to rid itself of a substance that isn't supposed to be there. And so now, the Reiki practitioner knows to change what kind of healing energy she is using in order to work with this inflammation and to heal it. You can use your activated hand energy in blessing your garden for hugging a tree or using this energy to bless any plant or vegetation that you may be struggling with to get growing. To add love to it will only help it. Especially when you do a garden, bless the ground, bless the seeds, bless it every time you walk through it and you will watch your garden grow and create beautiful, nutritious food. Some of us are not lucky enough though to have our food and be able to grow it. The rest of us get ours from the grocery store. Let's consider for a moment just what that really means. It means that someone else planted your seeds. Today those seeds probably are GMO seeds. That means genetically modified organisms. These seeds are called suicide seeds because they do not reproduce themselves. And it is thought that they may be contributing to problems of sterility. 
GMO means that they have the DNA of those seeds have been completely modified, usually by Roundup insect and weed pesticide. So when you start out with a seed that's got pesticide in it, it's not the best beginning. Then your farmer puts it in his field. And he goes up and down, up and down, up and down your field, rototilling it, harrowing it, whatever else, fertilizing it, getting it ready for the seeds. Then he puts the seeds in and the plants begin to grow. And he goes up and down, up and down, up and down the fields with the pesticide. Then he goes up and down, up and down, up and down the fields with the chemical fertilizers. And all this chemical stuff kills the microbes in the soil so that your soil is not living and it's dead. Then you have the fuel residue from the tractors as the tractors go up and down the field, up and down the field. But something very pu few people take into consideration is the emotional and profanity that may be coming from the farmer. This is how energy works. And I know a lot of you may be laughing at that, but later on I will show you exactly how energy works. So for the moment, just trust me. And the profanity and the anger, the frustration, whatever that farmer that day may have been experiencing also goes on the food. So you have multiple trips, multiple profanity, and negative emotions. Then along comes your farm hands. It's now time to harvest this food. And you have farm hands that come in. And they may use a lot of profanity or have a bad day or maybe just not have good dispositions at all. Then from there, your food goes to the packing house where again, there are people packing it, putting it in boxes, getting it ready for shipping. And they're swearing, they're having a bad day and all their negative emotions goes on your food. Well, now, you're loading it into the truck and your truck takes off and at the other end the truck has to unpack it and everybody knows about the saying of swearing like a trucker so now some of the food will go to processing and processing will take out whatever nutrition may be left in your food without that nutrition you might as well be eating cardboard some of the food will go directly to the stores. And here you have store employees who will now be putting their negativity on your food. And finally, there it is in the store and you go and pick it out and you take it home. And all this arrives in your home. Is this really the good food that you intended on feeding your family? Well, let me tell you, the GMO seeds are affected at their DNA. That means that if you will use this method of hand dowsing, bring the energies in, bless your food, even as it sits on your table, use the transmuting light to get rid of all the negativity and move it out. Tell your food to revert back to its originally etheric design in the seed DNA that Creator made that food to be. And then channel the energies onto your food and you can feel the life force build in it. Just like when you have your hands and you're putting energy between your hands, you can feel the energy build. And so as you add the energy to your food, be grateful for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now you've got the best food there is to eat. Here is one of my paintings from my book, Spirit Winds of Peace. I wanted to use it for two reasons. Number one, it shows children doing this. It shows children doing hand dowsing and using this energy to heal a little animal. 
And in this painting, you see the energies around them, uniting them as one, and you see all the animals joining in. You see all of nature joining in. This is the way everything was intended to be. One other way to do hand dowsing is through finger interlocking. This is a form of muscle testing. First, put your fingers in this form and tug on them to make sure that you are in correct polarity and that it is strong. If it happens to break and shows a weak connection, then it is time to sit and meditate, perhaps get a drink of water and get your polarity realigned. Then after it is realigned and it tests strong, then you are ready to ask questions. When you ask questions like, for instance, you want to know if a particular product on the health food shelf is good for you, simply ask while holding it underneath your elbow, is this good for me? If it pulls strong, then you know it's good. If it doesn't, then you know this is not anything that you want to have. And you can test down. When you find a couple that are good for you, now you can ask the question, is this the best for me? Is this what I really need to have to help me get healthier? And will it work with the other items I'm already taking? And you test again. This can be developed into a science where you can ask, could you take Chinese herbs? Could you take Native American herbs? Could you take uh, uh, natural um, hormone products? You can go down the list and find out just exactly what it is in that list that is best for you. Then when you have determined which items you want to buy, you can then hold the jar and again, ask it, how many should you take? And as you pull on that, it will tell you one, two, three, four, and it will give way when you have reached too many. You can also find out, how many times a day do I take these? Do I take one, four times a day? Do I take two, two times a day? Do I take one in the morning? Do I take one at noon, one at supper, and one at bedtime? You can ask all kinds of questions and get answers this way that are yes and no. Muscle testing has one other way to do it, and that is using your entire body. You can stand and hold your vitamin jar or your food item, whatever it might be, to your chest and ask, is this good for me? Is this the best for me? If it is a no, your body will back away from it. If it is a yes, it will pull you toward it. These things happen automatically in your body. It is not a matter of you doing it. Your body does it for you. Some other modalities, such as some chiropractors, also use muscle testing to make sure that the movements that they have done on you actually did what they were supposed to. They can check your connection by doing muscle testing also, sometimes by pushing on your arm, sometimes by pushing on your leg. So I would like to introduce you to three master dowsers. First one is Frank Jordan. He's a local. He's a psychic and a healer. He's also past president of the National American Society of Dowsers, which is now taken throughout the United States and created an organization where people experiment with this and have created a multitude of healing modalities with dowsing as the basis. Another is David Yarrow. He is an earth activist. He helped to establish the organic agricultural standards with NOFA. Also a water angel of India, having doused and found places for India to drill wells so that the people would have water. 
He also is a mapper of ley lines and sacred earth geometry. Below is a photograph of one of the areas that he has meticulously mapped the ley lines around Lake Onondaga in New York State. The blue lines show a vesica Pisces. The pink lines show vortexes where the line, ley lines have crossed across each other. This shows that the earth is supposed to have organization. It might be fun sometime to map your areas. And the third is Raymond Grace. He's a Native American founder of and president of Raymond Grace Foundation. He is a dowser, a lecturer, and he has authored many books. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. It's just a little taste of what you can do with dowsing. Dowsing has so many possibilities. I hope that this presentation has encouraged you to give it a try because everyone can do dowsing. Explore and work with all the different options that are available to find ways in which you can help yourself understand spirit energies even better. Thank you for attending, and we will see you soon. Bye.